Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we got a popsicle stick piano. Well, we got a fun little show this week that you can get the kids involved with and have a blast. It's a good way to get them involved in two things, crafting and music. Uh, guys, I thought that we could take some popsicle sticks or craft sticks and turn it into some form of a piano. And it's a simple little thing that is going to start off with some craft sticks from the dollar store. Well, although I'm not a fan of dollar stores, they do have some things that can be handy in the shop. And these here, extra jumbo craft sticks, uh, they were they were a buck 25 for this pack. I actually buy these to mix epoxy with. That's what I, I use them for. But I had an idea. Now, who hasn't at some point in time been bored at their desk and taken a ruler or a stick or whatever and done this and then of course as you move it up you know who hasn't done that and played a little tune i'm sure all of you have tried it at some point in time even if you didn't know what you were doing you know you sit there it's it's there's something about it. I don't know what it is, but I think everybody has done it, whether you did it as a child or as a, as a childish adult <laughs> like me. I don't know. But either way, I thought it could be fun to take these and mount them to a board in such a way that we could create some form of musical instrument. So what, it's gonna, what we're going to need at this point is a length of scrap pine. Well, what I have here is a piece of three quarter inch thick pine and it is 20 inches long and just under five inches wide. It's just what I had in the rack. Well, we need to do a little bit of layout first. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to lay a line down end to end half an inch in from the end of the board and then in another inch to make it in an inch and a half from the board we will draw another line now these two lines will be for screws to tighten down and secure our craft sticks so what we need in total we're going to need 25 of the craft sticks but for starters we only need 15 and this will represent two full octaves of the scale so we need to space these evenly across our pine board, all 15 of them, leaving just enough space for a mounting screw. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. So what we're going to do is in order to mount these, we're going to use some number 10 by three quarter inch pan head screws. Um, there will be one on each of these lines between each of the sticks. So in order to get some clearance from the screw, I've measured the uh, diameter here, including the threads, and it's 3 16 of an inch, roughly. It's a little less, but 3 16 will give us plenty of wiggle room in case we mess up. So we now need to do some calculations, and this is going to mess up some of my metric friends out there, but I'm sure that it's very easily converted for you to do it at your end. Now, each one of these sticks is 31 30 seconds wide. So if we take all 15 and multiply them by 31 30 seconds, we get 14 and 17 30 seconds of an inch. That is our total distance between or from end to end if all of these sticks were tight together. But we need a 3 16 of an inch gap in between each one. So there are 14 spaces here. So if we take 14 and we multiply that by 3 16 we end up with 2 and 5 8 Well, 2 and 5 8 plus the full length is 14 and, 30 sec uh, 14 and 17 30 seconds. That gives us a total of 17 and 5 30 seconds. So, if we take that, that dimension and subtract it from the full length of our board, that leaves us with 2 and 27 30 seconds. Confused yet? Don't worry about it. You'll understand in a bit. That is the distance, uh, 
2 and 27 30 seconds. If all of these sticks were mounted and put at one end of the board, that is the distance right here, 2 and 21 30 seconds. However, we need to divide that by 2 so that our craft sticks can be centered. And if we divide that by 2, we end up with 1 and 12, 27 64 That is how much space we need between our sticks on either side. But it doesn't allow for the center hole for our screws. So we need to take that dimension and subtract 3 30 seconds of an inch. That will leave us with 1 and 21 64 and that is where we're going to put our first hole or our first marks. And that will be the first marks for our screws. A little confusing, yes, but run through it and you'll, you'll get the math. It's just figuring out your first holes. Now, between here, if we take the thickness of the screw at 3 sixteenths of an inch and we add the length of our stick, that will give us the space that we need between each one of our screw holes. In this case, it's 1 and 5 30 seconds. So what I need to do now is place a mark all the way across, leaving one and five thirty seconds in between each hole. So let me get all those marked and then we can move on to the next step. And now at each one of these points, here and here, here and here, all the way along, we are going to center punch and drill a pilot hole for that number 10 by three quarter inch screw. And at this point, you should have something that looks like this. So we're going to give the entire top of the board a good sanding for starters. And then at each one of our hole locations, we are going to install, a, as I've said, a number 10 by 3 quarter inch screw and a number 10 flat washer. Now, don't screw them all the way in, but we can get a screw and a washer installed at each hole location. Well, after getting this far with it, I've decided that those washers are going to be a pain in the neck to have to get a stick under afterwards. So I'm going to switch gears a bit here and I'm going to install the sticks as I go. So you can already see I'm already fumbling with this washer trying to get the stick underneath it. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to install the sticks as we go and pin them down with your number 10 washers and your three quarter inch screws. Well, we had a little bit of a mishap in our last screw came in and split the pine at the end. So I kind of was afraid that, that might happen. No big deal. We can, uh, we can deal with that. All we're going to do is I'm going to put this screw in the rest of the way, get that split to happen. I'm going to remove that screw, squirt some wood glue in there and squeeze it back together. Um, that should hold it fairly tight for us. But there is our keys, I guess we'll call them, for our popsicle stick piano installed. We now need to tune this in order to make it sound like notes. So in order to tune it, all I've done is downloaded a free chromatic tuner app on my phone. And for a piano, you would just tune it C, D, E, F, 
G A B C and then it continues D E F G A B C that will give us two octaves so you just want to hold your stick tightly to the board and gently pluck your um, this you can see how sensitive this one is it's jumping all over because it's going by my voice so hold it down and gently pluck it until you get the note you want And you can go through and by shortening or lengthening these, you can tune them to the way you want. Once you get it tuned to the pitch you like, tighten down the screw and then move on to the next one. It can be a tedious process, but I wouldn't, you know, worry yourself too much about it. Remember what this is. This is a child's toy. This is not a concert instrument. This is not something that will be in the Philharmonic. So tune it up to get your two octaves from C to C, end to end, and then we can move on from there. Well, it's a time-consuming process, but we're getting there. So, this one here is a little flat, but it's just a matter of gently plucking it. I find that plucking it up works better than down. Uh, for tuning, holding it at your positions here of your screws, gently plucking up and then tuning it. If you need to make it higher, you push the stick in. If you need to make the tone lower, you pull the stick out. So either way, get them all tuned up the way that you want, and when I get these ones done, I'll come back and we can move on to the next step. And eventually, it takes time, I'm not going to kid you, this takes a while, but eventually you'll get two octaves of a scale that you're happy with. There you go. So these are the major notes now. Um, but what I would suggest, if you're happy with the tuning and you want them to stay this way, I would now mark them on the back and glue them in place. If you want to keep it so that it's tunable in case something goes out of whack, then don't glue them in. Just make sure that all your screws are tight in place and then we can carry on with the next step because what we're going to do now is we're going to add our sharps and our flats. So I now have another piece of pine. It is still 20 inches long, but it's three inches wide. And I have taken some of our craft sticks and painted them black. You don't have to paint them black. I just did it for fun to make it look a little better. Um, so we need to place our keys for our flats and sharps. And if you're not familiar with a keyboard, let me just lay these out and show you how they go. So they will go just like this. One here, then one here, then you have the B and the C, and then one goes here, the D, and then another one will go here, here, and then here. So these are going to be our flats and our sharps. Now for this, we have 10 sticks all together, and we're going to do the exact same thing as what we did before with laying our screws out on here, but we will do it so that they will fit the way that we have them laid out here, just like this. Um, if you're not sure, you can, stop this here and screenshot it or what have you and then we will end up tuning these in the same fashion but first off let's get our holes drilled and get these screwed to our top board
All right, and then these will get tuned in the exact same way that we tune these ones uh, to the notes on the keyboard. I'm not gonna run through all the notes. Um, you can always Google that, what the notes are, but tune them up and then I'll show you what to do next. And when it's all said and done and tuned, you should have something for the sharp and flat keys that look like this. And that will get mounted right on top. However, right now it is pressing down on our other keys, making it completely untunable if you have left yours loose. So for that, I have cut some quarter inch thick spacers. They will get glued onto the lower portion and onto on each end rather and then we will glue that or this section on top like that to keep it raised up and uh, that's pretty much our keyboard done at this point and what you end up with is this and honestly guys uh, for a young child this thing is pretty awesome um, the best part is, for the parent, it's not very loud, but they could definitely play songs on it. Um, I'm actually quite surprised about the quality of the sound. It took me about an hour to tune it, all in all, but um, it's not too bad. I mean, and they can play songs on it if they wish, like the simplest of songs. So, I mean, if they wanted to, let them play away. You never know what you might spark, and I, I don't know, I think this is pretty darn cool. And there you have it. A popsicle stick or craft stick piano. Guys, this was a lot of fun. It really was. I wasn't really sure what I was going to make when I came out to the shop today or what I was going to film for that matter. And then I went through my list of ideas and this was on there and I thought, ah, why not? And I got to tell you, it was worth every minute I spent. Now, I probably whipped this whole thing up in a few hours, but it takes time to tune it. Um, the biggest and the longest part was screwing all the screws in. And at first I started off with a screwdriver and then said, what do I want, carpal tunnel? <laughs> Forget that. I've got a screw gun there or an impact gun. So I ended up using that. Um, worked a lot better, saved my wrist, the whole nine yards. But after playing with the tuning and that sort of thing, you do get a usable instrument. Now it all depends on how much time you want to play around with the tuning. Um, I just picked an, a free app, a free tuning app off of the App Store from Apple and uh, that's what I used and it actually worked really well. I've used other tuner apps that require a little more of a sustain than what this instrument gave, um, but this one worked great. You just had to keep plucking that note and kind of fine tuning. I did find that after a while I got into a rhythm where I would tune the note just lower than what I needed. And then as I tightened the screws down, it actually brought it up a semitone. So it worked out that I could get most of them pretty close right off the bat and just a little bit of fine tuning. Now this, mine isn't perfect. It's not perfect. And I'm sure that if I want to spend a few more hours tuning it, it could be, but you have to remember it for what it is. It is a child's toy. And, uh, you know, honestly, guys, this is one of those toys that you could work on with your child. There is nothing here that they couldn't do. From drilling the holes to screwing in the screws to adjusting the popsicle sticks or the craft sticks, um, you know, th this thing is phenomenal. A child could do every aspect of that, and in the end of it all, they have made an instrument that they can play. You never know what you might spark with this. You might end up with the next... Liberace or Beethoven or whatever other pianists there are out there. Who knows? It sparks a, an interest in music. It may spark an interest in singing. Guys, this is just a great toy and although you may seem like it's a simple project and you know I'd 
throw out, that's, what's the point of that? No, you know what? There's a lot of point to this. And one of the biggest points is quality time with your child. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to today's concert. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the show. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, if you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, click the bell and then you won't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. I'm going to try to post the link down for the, uh, the app that I use down below. If you're interested in that, you can give it a whirl. Guys, I hope that you've enjoyed today's show. It's been a lot of fun for me. I hope you like the content as simple as it may be. That's what Tuesdays are all about. Just something fun, something different. But honestly, guys, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. And who knows, maybe uh, another concert. <laughs>